Communication is quite central to the human civilization around the world. Human to human communication is one thing, but then recording that communication elsewhere so that it can be retrieved on demand whenever needed. And this very idea is the foundation for written down format of language, what we call script. And what's a script? It is just a bunch of symbols that has one a sound value to a meaning. So every symbol what you see has two parts to it, a specific sound and a specific meaning. Throughout the human history, these symbols etched in stone, painted on walls, were the building blocks of our world's first scripts. They didn't just represent sounds, they told stories, shared ideas, and connected minds across time and space. Long before the modern alphabet, ancient people discovered that a single picture could convey the depth of a thousand words. This was the dawn of language, the first form of written speech, a legacy that shaped human civilization. Symbols unveil this journey, tracing the origins of how we communicate. Throughout the world, especially in the field of mathematics, for counting, different civilizations around the world had their own ways and means of writing down symbols to keep the count. In the field of mathematics, in this short video, we are going to focus on the Indian mathematics, especially one symbol that will fundamentally change our understanding about the ancient sciences and the history of science and how this aspect of science or rather evolved in Bharat over thousands of years. Let us turn to the Bhakshali manuscript, one of the oldest mathematical texts in the world. The Bhakshali manuscript, discovered in 1881 near Bhakshali, part of India back then and currently in Pakistan, is one of the oldest known mathematical texts. Dating back to between 3rd and 4th century CE, it offers insight into ancient Indian mathematics, containing advanced mathematics and algebraic techniques far ahead of its time. Written on birch bark in Siddhamatrika script, the manuscript demonstrates complex calculations including fractions and negative numbers and a lot more. Remarkably, it features the earliest recorded usage of zero as a placeholder, a revolutionary concept that influenced mathematics worldwide. This Bakshali manuscript is currently in the Bodleian Library in UK. Hypothetically speaking, if at all British gives me a choice to choose one of these two, Kohinoor or Bakshali, which one you want back in Bharat, I would say the Bakshali. British can keep the Kohinoor because for me, this is more valuable than the Kohinoor. Every student in Bharat should know about Bhakshali manuscript because it fundamentally explains how advanced was Indian mathematics some 2000 years ago. Anyway, currently our interest is about one specific symbol from this manuscript. Here if we take a look at this page of this manuscript, especially this region, what is this symbol? This is our question. At the outset looks like a plus but it is not. So let us understand what it is. First of all, the Bhakshali manuscript is fully readable. We don't even have to decipher it. It is written in Siddhamatrika script, which is a predecessor to the current format of Samskritam. What I am about to say is already known in the academic circles, but not necessarily in the common public discourse. And that's my objective with this video, to bring forward in a simple and understandable format. So the numbers 1 to 0 shown here, this is how the Bhakshali manuscript is written, the numbers. And here, this part, we understand that it is 3 on top of 3 and the symbol and 8 on top of 8 and the symbol again. Looks like kindergarten mathematics. Yes, it is, but with a hunch. To understand what is this plus-like symbol, we just have to turn to the Edicts of Ashoka, one of the oldest, or rather the oldest, written format of Samskritam that we find in the Edicts of Ashoka. And that's where we can find this character or the symbol used all over the Edicts a lot of times. So now let us try to understand what is the meaning and the sound value of the symbol. So this plus looking like symbol is actually the Brahmi letter Ka. So what we have in the Bhakshali manuscript should be read as 3 Ka 3. You can try this character even on your laptop. The Unicode is 11013. That is the Brahmi letter Ka. Now let us try to understand the meaning of this letter Ka. Before we get to the meaning of this sound ka, let us also understand how the writing has evolved. On the Edicts of Ashoka, it is shown as a plus. Right? That is K 
carving with a hammer and chisel. So you have very limited mobility and a very good control in straight lines. But when it comes to writing it down with hand on a birch bark or on a palm leaf with a guntum or quill or a stylus like thing, the writing just flows on the paper or on the palm leaf. Just try to draw this symbol without lifting pen on paper. You will end up with what we have towards the right. And then eventually the Shiro Rekha was added later in the Devanagari script. And that's how over 2000 years of evolution, the car towards the left became the car towards the right that we use today. Now let's get to the meaning of this sound ka or the letter ka. In Sanskritam, single letters also hold meaning. And the meaning of ka means to diminish or to reduce. So three ka three is actually three minus three or three diminished by three. What you're witnessing here is one of the most ancient arithmetic operations in the history of mankind, the subtraction. But that's not the important takeaway here. What I want you to understand is the usage of a letter to represent the subtractive operation. We did not invent new symbols like what we have today, plus, minus, divided by, multiplied. No, we did not have symbols out of the meaningful letters. We took the meaningful letters and used them as symbols. Let me explain this with few examples and you will understand how important it is to get the right understanding about how this symbol is used in Bhakshali manuscript. The moment when we think of vegetables or fruits, a grocery store comes into our mind, but not the agricultural farm. Because we're used to picking up vegetables from a shop, not from a field. Same way, when we think of mathematics, the formulas and all, the area of a circle, pi r square, these kind of formulas come into our mind. But this was not the way things were articulated in ancient India. They were articulated in a linguistic format. This is what Aryabhatta gave as a formula. Half of the circumference multiplied by the radius gives exact area of the circle. This is a formula given by Aryabhatta to calculate the area of a circle without using pi. We all know the degree of uncertainty of pi back then due to its transcendental nature. But that's a different topic. But here, what I want to say is, in ancient Bharat, all these formulas were given in literary format, which is like picking up vegetables from the farm or the field, versus what in our current education system that we learn is in a different format. Area of a circle is equal to pi r square. That's what we are fed in our childhood. Look, my intention is not to underestimate or disregard the current education system. Absolutely not. That's the reason why we all are where we are today. The only point what I want to say is in Bharat, there has been enormous amount of scientific discoveries that happened and all of that has been encoded in literary format using alphabet, using letters. So if you don't see these formulas, don't think that people back then had no idea about mathematics. That is fundamentally incorrect. The way of articulation is totally different. That's what the Bhakshali script about Ka using the Sanskrit letter ka which has a meaning of to diminish to represent the subtraction as well remember i said we did not invent symbols and attribute meanings we took meaningful letters and used them as symbols now this is one very simple example of such scenario now let's do the opposite let's go to a very complex scenario that kept mathematicians awake for the last 2300 years. The problem of squaring a circle. Basically, the problem is, I give you an area of a circle. Now, you need to construct a square with the same area as that of the circle that I gave you, using finite number of steps. It sounds like a primary school geometry problem, but it is not. Because of the transcendental nature of pi, this is almost a very, very difficult task. Ancient Greeks struggled with this problem, and in Europe, at least till Leon da Vinci for 1500 years this problem is unsolved in Europe but in ancient Bharat this problem is solved for the practical purposes in the Vedic rituals there is a concept of Tretagni or three Vedic fire altars in the shapes of square semicircle and circle and the rule of thumb is all these three Vedic fire altars or the Yajna Kundas should be of exactly the same area because all these three need to equally burn throughout the ritual so equal capacity which equals same area. So there inherently came the problem of constructing a square altar with the same area as that of a circular altar or vice versa. 
and for this problem of constructing a square from a circle or a circle from a square as part of user vedam there are certain algorithms that are given and if you follow those algorithms you can construct the area of a circle which is exactly same as that of the square or vice versa but remember one thing this is not an astronomical precession of some eighth place of your decimal no nothing of that sort this is a practical axiomatic mathematics or rather geometric principles that were followed in ancient bharat and just take a look at the articulation what's given in sanskritam is just a paragraph of text but when we understand that that's essential an algorithm the key takeaway of this entire video is the way of articulation just because you did not see formulas printed in ancient manuscripts does not mean that there was no mathematical advancements back then the way of articulation is different we used a linguistic or rather a literary format of articulation and not the crude mathematical numbers or symbols or so that sort of articulation what we are used today and that's how 2300 years old problem that the greeks tried to solve in bharat it has been a household ritual for many thousands of years even before that using this simple mathematical steps articulated in a literary format The bottom line of this video is twofold. The first one is whether we're talking about a simple problem of calculating the area of a circle without using pi or the complex problem of squaring a circle or circling a square. Irrespective of the level of complexities, the way of articulation of mathematics in Bharat is encoded into these shlokas or in the verses of Sanskritam. Just because you don't see the straightforward formulas that we have been learning since childhood does not mean that we We don't know all this stuff. The way of articulation is far more deep, wide, and complex. That is the first takeaway. The second takeaway is whatever in terms of mathematics that we had in Bharat, it may be quite rudimentary with the current advancements that we have made. But we need to teach our children about the roots of the mathematics that emanated out of Bharat. And when we talk about sabhyata or sampradayam or samskriti, this is what it is all about. If a child is not taught about how mathematics emanated off of bharat there is nothing that you are teaching about bharat to that child and that's absolutely not for a some sense of superiority complex that we are the best in the world that's garbage i've been working on this field for the last 5 years day 1 when i started project shivoham i said these words and i will always keep saying these words not everything in the world is invented by bharat but all the great things invented or discovered in bharat are not known to the world and that is exactly my objective with project shivoham Now it is equally important also to be cautious in understanding the subject that mathematics is encoded into shlokas. Now here is a very very famous fake narrative that the distance to sun is encoded in Hanuman Chalisa. Yuga Chhastra Yojana Parabhanu Lilyo Tahi Modiru Pala Janu. I did a 20 minute long video only on this subject. Why this is a fake narrative and there is nothing related to distance between sun and moon encoded in Hanuman Chalisa. Search for Project Shivoham Hanuman Chalisa and you'll get. at this documentary an even simpler thing to do is just read the geeta press translation what is on the screen yuga sahasra yojana parabhanu lilyota hi madhur phala janu means yuga is to reach or to join or to hold or to grab sahasra means innumerable para is further bhanu means sun so basically hanuman tried to grab sun who is at a very far distance but there is no mention of any distance between sun and earth in hanuman chalisa the reason i'm quoting this is we need to be careful of this fake narratives and narratives like this do disservice to the grand history of bharat in the field of mathematics So to conclude this video if you like the content that I try to create to educate people on the right knowledge about Bharat Project Shivoham is the independent content platform here is where I'll be writing blogs or posting videos and other content in English Hindi and Telugu if you find sense in what I'm talking about and if you think that there is truth in this then subscribe to projectshivoham.com you will get alerts directly from me whenever I create content or post content on this platform and as always Thanks for watching.